Dear M, I dropped by and checked how you looked, and I wanted you to know you look like awesome. You look like a unicorn in a floral blue suit, and if you look back and look now, you've come a long way in loving yourself, appreciating yourself, and try to make a better human at every step. Thank you, you've made waves, and keep making it. I love you, and forever there for you. Yours, M. This was a love letter. It's a love letter I wrote to myself this morning, and it's part of a ritual that I follow in order to love myself, save myself, and protect myself. It's the kind of love that has moved mountains. It's the kind of love that has enabled me to be here right now and talk about my life story. Coming up from a small industrial town on the outskirts of New Delhi, I was the youngest of seven siblings, and I was kind of different. I was a lean, shy boy, and all I wanted to do was grow old and be with these amazing people far, far away from me, who were doing crazy things and who were weird, just like me, and I just wanted to be with them, know their stories, listen to Missy Elliott with them, and just, just be, right? While most people want to go back to school as the age to remember with fun and frolic, I kind of dread the idea of waking up to be in school again. For 12 of the most formative years of my life, I was subjected to physical punishment, abuse, and bullying in my school, and I was kind of subjected to be in either of the two faculties, which is either be an engineer or be a chartered accountant, since in India, if you're not any of the two, you're clearly doomed. So what I did at that point was that I had to suppress myself because of all these noise and all these sense of things that were told to me to become, to be, to prove, and I never wanted to be any of those. I mean, I wanted to wear a floral suit and talk about my life. That is what my dream was, right? So what I did was, I started writing journals. I started writing journals, the kind of like self-addressed love letters to myself, and that shaped everything that my life had. When New York Times came to my small industrial town to cover my expression and cover my story with fashion, and when Forbes America talked about my love of my life, which is loving, I knew there was something right that I did in those journals, and something was shaping up that I didn't know back then, but defines the current me. In 2014, I started my first big project called Nomadic Origins, an anthropology of modern nomads that has traveled to over 200 plus cities in 34 countries in 258 nomads I've covered so far. And with these people, I've literally lived with them night after night and listened to their stories and asked them questions that are detailed, personal, and supremely honest. These conversations defined a big sense of who I am and how I face the world today. I ended up living in illegal squats in Holland, I ended up living in palaces in India, mansions across Paris and LA, and finally I was talking to war migrants, the Syrian war migrants in Greece and Turkey, trying to know what is it about their life, what is it about their story, and what is it that defines them as the person. Everyone goes through a certain sense of trials and revolutions, and everyone defines their own individuality through them. But when I ask these questions to these individuals, there was this one particular question that made them extremely uncomfortable. It was as if they were losing it. There was a sense of nervousness while answering them. Someone even actually objected to the question itself. And that simple question was that in this moment, out of one to 10, how much do you love yourself? And do you think your love is enough? When I asked these questions, people objected. People were kind of uncomfortable, as I mentioned. But that made me question, why is it that a question so primal and so honest about loving yourself could be so hard for most people? Why can't we truly just talk about loving ourselves without really confusing it to narcissism or some other subject whatsoever? There's a lot going wrong in the world today. We live in a world that's globalized, where profit defines everything, and where there are no needs, we create needs. There's a massive propaganda against Muslims because of the war industry and the multi-million dollars invested in the war industry. Fairness streams are sold to brown men. There's a lot happening in the world that we don't want to fit into, but there's a status quo colonization of literally everything we follow, from the clothes we wear to who we are to who we want to become. And why do we follow all these things? We have no idea. When you mainstream news and when you scroll it through your Facebook and your Instagram, what you see is this horrible sight of humanity. And it's natural for us to close ourselves because, come on, we're humans and we are scared of seeing that kind of pain coming towards us. But when things like those happen, what we do is we close ourselves to not just the amazing amount of pain that there is out there, but also the awesomeness that life has to offer.
I mean, our life is giving us opportunity every single day to be the person we want to become, to be everything we want to become. But we lose it simply by numbing ourselves from all the pain that we have. A shaman woman I once photographed in Sava, Vietnam, once told me that your life is like a jar, and you fill it drop by drop, bit by bit, with love. Once you've filled your jar enough, let it spill out beautifully to the person next to you, to your work, to humanity, to people, because that is the right way to love, and that is so true. It was totally true in my case when I really saw myself impossibly loving another person and failing simply because I couldn't love myself enough. This defined the course of my life, and when I started working in 2012 and moved out of my little bubble of journals into the real world, I ended up documenting some of the most prominent stories so far. I lived in Budwar Pate and covered the stories of transgender sex workers in Pune. I ended up living in an Osho commune in Goa, um, learning the hippie vibe and learning to know what it is they think and how is it so different from the world that I come from. And since my journey was evolving and moving, I ended up going to Kashmir, where I ended up staying and I became a war journalist right then. Covered some of the most honest, true, brutal stories of war that was there, which was personal interaction with humanity, suffering, face to face. Now, what I did not know at that moment was that I was introducing myself, as a 22-year-old Lampath, I was introducing myself to a whole new variety of ideas and thoughts that were way beyond my control, and I, as the ideal self, was thinking that the photographer in me or the camera that I have can actually defeat the guns. But what I was doing was I was taking all that trauma that people were going through every single day. And there is a lot of trauma. There is a lot of pain. There is a lot of issues that are going on out there and we don't get to hear, that shaped the way I considered myself and that shaped the way I considered the country that I live in. Now, when I came back, feeling all defeated, nothing was the same again. I'd lost hopes in my camera for a while. My father, who was sick for a very long time, passed away exactly at that moment, and my six-year-old relationship broke up in the worst way possible. This was a time when I felt like everything I'd worked on in my identity, my everything was just stolen away in one single second. And that love that I was introduced to before by the shaman woman wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. I wanted to kill myself at that moment. For almost two months, I was depressed, lonely, sad, sitting by myself in my afternoon siesta time, and I just looked at my camera once again, sitting on a tripod, and I decided to take a portrait of me. It was the hardest decision because I was so broken and I was so heavy in my head and I just decided that, yes, I'm going to take a photo of myself. And growing up, I never thought of myself to be decent looking. I was always like, no, I would never face the camera. And if there are any photographers here, we all know how much we fear the camera and to be in front of it. I took that first portrait of myself. I felt the need to make another love letter which was visual. And this came out. <laughs> Thank you. For the very first time, I did not feel the macho guy I wanted to be. I did not feel the savior boyfriend that I was expected to be. For the first time, I didn't feel anything that anybody expected me of being but myself. The beautiful self that I had, profound, deep, going through some rough time, but still there, active, and wanting to give myself a chance again. And I did. And that shaped everything. There's something about kindness, especially if directed towards your side, and self-compassion and empathy, which, when you exercise, you have these weird chains of exciting opportunities, things, people that come into your life that change the very meaning of how we see life. Right exactly at that point, Matter, Fri Matter Prince, uh, Ren Yung Ho from Matter Prince Singapore contacted me, and she wanted to work with the first project that she was working on, and it was about sustainable fashion. Now, if you see me working in a war condition to sustainable fashion, it's a big shift that I had to go through. And what followed was something totally different from what I expected. I was in rickety buses with Ren, going through all over the country, trying to cover these stories, trying to meet these people, and what I saw was there were these people who really loved what they do, totally loved with what they did, but losing their jobs because of fast, fast, fast fashion conglomerates. Now, here I was with my camera again, feeling like I have it in me to make a change to these people, to these artisans, and I took one photo at a time and took them out all over the world. And what changed was that 150 campaigns down the line, my stories from these artisans were all over the internet, and it just literally stormed the conscious fashion industry. And I feel so glad I did. 
Um, and then I met this woman uh, in Kannur, Kerala, just on the outskirts of Kohikore. Um, I asked her the same question, that do you love what you do and do you love yourself? She said that I do try to love every bit of myself as I can, but what I do love is the work that I do. Every single thread made of different colors is made out of my hands and sent all over the world, shipped in beautiful, joyous packets. And I feel responsible for that joy that I'm trying to send. And coming from a small industrial town that I come from and I'm sending these packets all across the world, I feel truly happy. I feel like I'm doing it. At that moment, I felt like it was a complete circle. At that moment, I was like, this is not a coincidence. I was born to do this. My circuitous path of creativity was meant to meet this woman, photograph her journey, and try to make any bit of a difference that I can do. And that moment, I also realized that my camera does not have to fight with guns. It's enough to make beauty, because beauty itself is change. I started exploring fashion in new light, Ikat, Jamdani, block prints, and started using them as a method of expression, as a method of identity, and try to tell this to the world through my Instagram page. And that changed a lot of new things. I started designing my own clothes. I made this on Photoshop last week, and I finally have a suit out of it. Um, and this is what I started doing to try to decolonize how we see fashion, how we see the clothes we wear, not fit into your blacks and whites. I mean, we're not dressed for funerals. We're dressed to be ourselves, and we're dressed to be who we are and what we wanted to be as children. And with this, I want to ask you guys, what is it that you write in your love letter? What is it that you follow as a ritual to be yourself, to love yourself, to follow your instinct, and follow the person that you wanted to be as a kid? What is it that you do to love? And with this, I will ask another question. That out of one to 10, how much do you love yourself in the moment? Thank you.